Hello, church. I'm back again for a timeless truth. In, in 1 Kings chapter 17, uh, it's um, a, a prophet bursts on the scene uh, like a lightning bolt. That prophet was Elijah. And much like Melchizedek, we didn't know, we don't know much about his background. He just showed up. And, um, and the first thing he did in chapter 17 of 1 Kings is he confronts the, the wicked king Ahab. And you may not remember who Ahab is, but you would identify him when I tell you that he was married to Jezebel. Well, after he basically puts his finger in the face of Ahab and says, because of your wickedness, God's going to bring his judgment upon the, the people here, the nation, and he's going to bring about a drought. Well, after that, God told uh, Elijah to go, to leave, to go hide yourself, basically. Verse 3 of First Kings 17 says, Go away from here and turn eastward and hide yourself by the brook of Kareth, which is east of the Jordan. Now, some interesting things here, I think. First, he tells him to go hide. And that word, uh, uh, the, the brook, the name for Kareth, uh, it comes from a Hebrew verb which meant two things. One, to hide yourself, or to cut, I should say, to cut yourself off from people. In other words, put yourself in isolation. But also, it was used to speak of a, a tree being cut down. So, no doubt that was a command by God for Elijah to go and to hide, to be protected by God. And, and scholars believe that he was there for a few years. But also, I think the symbolism perhaps speaks of the fact that God was bringing uh, Elijah, taking him and putting him aside and putting him in isolation so that God could speak to him and perhaps cut him down to size or to prune him for greater use by God. Clearly, he had a great ministry. Later on there, he tells him in this passage in verse 6, he says, The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening, and he would drink from the brook. So the divine pizza delivery came through ravens who would bring him bread and meat. So God fed him there, and God fed him not only physically, fed him spiritually, I'm sure, God spoke to him. But another thing that happened, though, after being there for some time and for perhaps hearing from God, uh, the brook dried up. Now think about this. God sends him out here, puts him, you know, at a place to hide him. Clearly he was in the center of God's will. But the, the famine, I mean, the drought, I should say, that was pronounced upon the people now was impacting Elijah. God clearly could have cause the brook to continue to flow with water, but he didn't. And you have to think that, at least if I had been there, I probably would have said, wait a minute, I'm in God's will, why is the brook drying up? But oftentimes when God puts us in the desert, put, brings us away from everybody, he does that to test us, to test our faith. And God may be doing that with you right now. There's an interesting story told about Frederick George, or George Frederick Handel. We know him as the one who wrote Handel's Messiah. We often do not know the backdrop from which that was written. The story is that his creditors were threatening to throw him into prison. He was suffering from partial paralysis and really was at the lowest point in his life financially and, and physically. And the story goes that Handel removed himself from everybody and went into a kind of isolation to get along and, and to fellowship with God. And they said that it was after that, or in the middle of that, that he wrote his greatest piece of work, as we, we know, again, as Handel's Messiah. And one person said of him, the time he was writing this, he said, the notes flew off of his pen. Clearly, God was with him. And God has spoken to him and enabled him to write such a fantastic piece. 
of, of music. So I want to encourage you, if you feel like um, you're in isolation, uh, listen for God. God has you there for a reason. Uh, don't miss His voice. And secondly, realize that probably there's a test there for you. And you want, you want to trust Him and you don't want to, you don't want to miss out on, on what God is trying to do to make you a stronger, better, more effective Christian for Him. Allow me to pray with you right now. Father, thank you that you're with us. Just like Elijah, you're with us even in the desert, that desert experience of that isolation. Uh, and and when, you, when we feel like we're just kind of by ourselves. Thank you that you're there with us and, and that you're going to put your arm, arms around us and, and walk with us. And uh, thank you for the lesson that we, you give us through the life of Elijah. We pray this in your son's name. Amen.